Learning how to draw on a graphics tablet can be very overwhelming, awkward, and an experience that will make you feel out of control. But is that not how most things are? Sure, but who would not like to get a little help to get started? Luckily, we have some tips for you that should help you get used to your new tablet real quick. For this video, we'll be focusing on tips that pertain to graphic tablets that do not have a display. Those with displays might have their own learning curve, but it certainly ain't steeper than the one with non-display tablets. With that being out of the way, let's jump right into it. Accepting the awkwardness Whatever the creative endeavor you might be going for with your tablet, one thing is for sure, you are used to looking at what you are working on. It is that simple. Our hands have always been positioned where our eyes are for anything from writing to cooking. Ever since we were children and just learning how to pick a pencil properly, coordinating our hand movement to our eyes was always done in a way that unites the two members. You're cooking, your eyes are looking at where you are pouring the ingredients, where you're chopping the vegetables, and so on and so forth. That is where the big curve with non-display graphic tablets happens. You will have to be looking in one place while your hand is in another, and you would still need to have them coordinated. This will certainly invoke feelings of awkwardness, uncomfortability, and you will most certainly be made to feel out of control. All of this makes your first instances dealing with a tablet feel incredibly overwhelming. This is natural, and while we cannot make these feelings go away, we can most certainly advise you to expect them and get used to them. This will soften the blow a bit. As silly as it might seem, expecting to feel uncomfortable and out of control will help you in breaking the tension. When you understand that your body is not used to functioning this way and that it needs to adapt to its new way of working, it will help you feel more patient when dealing with such uncomfortable emotions. Before we continue, let me tell you about Skillshare, which is a platform that has hundreds of classes about animation, drawing, illustration, and several other creative fields. We've got you guys this course from Skillshare about hand-drawn animations. The course is an introduction to animation. The course is taught by Johannes Faust, who will teach you how to animate. The course will cover basic animation workflow, the 12 principles of animation, and how to apply them, and much, much more. The Skillshare platform offers a wide variety of additional related courses, and the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will receive a free month of premium membership. Alright, now, back to the video. Aligning Tablet and Monitor Alright, so you are all one with your feelings and emotions, and are fine with them? Now, some concrete advice maybe? Coming right up! Here goes, it is very important for you to keep your tablet aligned with your monitor and not on the side or anywhere else. You are already struggling with coordinating your hands to your eyes. Do not make it worse by putting your tablet in a weird position. Apart from making you feel even awkward and making it hard to coordinate your hand and eyes, it can also affect your physical health negatively. Being in the correct position is essential when dealing with a tablet, especially if you're going to spend hours working with it. If you're using a laptop, try having your tablet positioned over your keyboard to keep your monitor and tablet as snug and comfortably aligned as possible. If you're used to using keyboard shortcuts and need them, try to use the hotkeys on your tablets if you have them. They're also a lot better for a healthy position. In comparison to having one arm on the table and another extended all the way to a keyboard, which can make for an awkward shoulder position that will definitely hurt your shoulder blades down the line, if not immediately. Keep your health in mind. Speaking of physical health, the misuse of a graphics tablet can actually affect your physical health in the long run. In a nutshell, make sure your elbow is supported to avoid carpal tunnel and tennis elbow. Surely, this can be caused by any creative activity that requires fine motor movement. However, with tablets, you are most likely to be positioned in a way where your hand is on the desk while your elbow just hangs around mid-air completely unsupported. This can cause a lot of pain and soreness and would definitely add to the already straining feelings of awkwardness. It is also important to mention that you need to buy as a big of a tablet as you can get. Working with a small tablet can really strain your elbow, wrist, and fingers. 
In addition, bigger tablets can also be easier to get used to than a smaller tablet. Especially if you have a big monitor to match, you also need to make sure you are taking frequent breaks and stretching. This definitely applies even if you are using a display tablet or just doing traditional art, but you also need to keep it in mind with non-display graphics tablets. Surely this might not relate to learning how to draw on a graphics tablet, but it is important for your health. And if you are not taking good care of your health, you might be cutting your drawing journey short. Practice, practice, practice. Another great tip is to practice using your tablet. And by practice, we do not mean just using your tablet to draw right off the bat. That can be extremely overwhelming and might make for an uncomfortable experience that can push you away from using your tablet altogether. Instead, we recommend you practice using your tablet for non-drawing tasks. These tasks can be varied. One fun task to do, especially if you like games, is to play Asu. It is a free-to-play rhythm game that can be played using a mouse, but it is most popularly played with a graphics tablet. It is actually a very popular way of getting used to how tablets work among new digital artists and is highly recommended for that purpose all around. If you want to practice by drawing and not just playing, another way you can practice is drawing basic lines and shapes and even coloring and so on and so forth. Doing simple drawing activities like that could help you get used to the tablet while not putting too much pressure on you and what you're making. If you start drawing something right off the bat, you might be way overwhelmed thinking about proportions, anatomy, the line quality, and so on and so forth. It is better to start small and build your way up. You could also trace over an already made drawing. You can either take a picture of a sketch from your sketchbook and insert it in your drawing software of preference and then trace over it, or you can trace someone else's work. Just be aware that you should not be sharing this and keeping it to yourself. If the original artist experiences any uncomfortability with their work being traced in any way, it is best to stick to your own sketches. When you are drawing shapes and lines, make sure to experiment with how you can adjust line width with how much pressure you put on your tablet with the nib of your stylus. A great thing about tablets is that you can adjust the sensitivity on your stylus to match your preference whether you are heavy-handed or light-handed. If these two practice ideas are still not something you would like to do or are simply far too overwhelming and difficult at the moment for you, we recommend you use your tablet regularly as a replacement for your mouse. Mice and tablets with their stylus work a lot differently, but that is what is great about this type of practice. It will teach you how moving your cursor around will require you to hover close to the surface of the tablet and making a mark will require you to place the nib of the stylus on the surface of the tablet. Press and then drag. It will teach you all of the intricacies of a graphics tablet without the added pressure of doing something creative. Just the perfect practice, isn't it? And then just rinse and repeat. The learning curve is steep, but as you practice, you will eventually get there. It is all about conquering the fear of uncomfortability and awkwardness, as with learning something new at all. You need to start small and build your way up. With enough perseverance, you will handle your tablet like a pro. And that was that for our video. Did you find any of these tips helpful? Make sure to let us know in the comments section below. If you have any tips of your own that we may have missed, feel free to share them. You could help someone with your tips. While you're here, why not check our other videos out? You might like them. And with that being said, we hope to see you in the next one.